right, so let's get uh, up. Get some pen. Get started. Um, so we've got two points here: negative three, comma six, and negative seven, comma three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a point right there: negative seven. As you know from algebra, and as we talked about last time, the slope is a measure of like the steepness of a line, the slantiness, the rise over the run, the vertical change over the horizontal change from one point to another. Um, so how do we find that vertical or vertical change versus horizontal change? How do we find the slope? Okay, y's on top, x's on bottom. We do have to be careful though. It can't be as flippant if it's just the y's and the x's, right? Which y needs to come first? Two. 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 Does it matter which one you call two? Does it even matter that y2 comes first, really? No. No, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is, well, first we have to pick a y to be the first one, or the second one, or however you're looking at it. Right? Which one do we choose? Six. Six. Okay, we're going to choose six. So the important thing is if we're going to do y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, then if this is y2, that this is the second point, and that x2 comes from there. This is the point uh, p1. So 6 minus 3, okay? That part really doesn't matter. We could have done 3 minus 6. The part that's important is if we do 6 minus 3, that we do negative 3 minus negative 7 so that they go in the same order. That the first ones come from a single point and the second ones, these ones right here, come from the other point. So uh, negative three down here minus negative seven. Six minus three is three and th negative three plus seven is four. So there we go, three fours. If we went the other way, three minus six, that'd be negative three. Negative seven uh, plus three would be negative four. So we still get positive three over positive four. Negative divided by negative. Okay, questions? Just find the slope between two points. Good on that? Okay. Um, so now we need to decide if these are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. If they're parallel, and we find now, listen to me closely here, to find out whether for sure these lines are parallel or perpendicular or neither, you need something better than drawing a graph. You can't just draw a graph in your head, or on a paper, or even on a computer, okay? Because, let's see. Uh, I have a feeling people are just gonna ignore this. Some, not all. Okay, here's a line. Here's another line. Are those parallel? Let's see, how can we tell? Well, we can't really tell, right? Especially if you're drawing it by hand, okay? Even if we do this, we could, uh, um, even if we do this, well, we can definitely tell they're not parallel, right? So I could try and fix it. Adjust these points, get them to be more parallel. That looks better. So we'll try again. Nope, they're not parallel. But even if they were really convincingly parallel, Right? They really look like they were parallel. Even if I moved one on top of the other, it looked like it was right on top of it. Does that guarantee that they're parallel? No, it certainly looks like it, but it's not a guarantee because they could just be the slightest bit off. The, the slopes could be so close, but just not quite equal. Okay, so they wouldn't be parallel. So what about the slopes tell us that the two lines are parallel? They're the same. Right? Keep it in mind when I say slope, I mean a number. A slope is a rise over a run, uh, a vertical change over a horizontal change. So in order to find out the parallel or perpendicular, we have to calculate the slopes. If we don't calculate the slopes, the picture will not be good enough. Okay? You might get lucky and draw two lines that look perpendicular, and it turns out the person who wrote the problem intended them to be perpendicular, but the picture is not proof. The numbers are proof. Okay? So we'll do this quickly. We won't um, spend a lot of time showing you again how to calculate a slope that we've already uh, learn to do. 
we'll do this. So negative 4 minus 1 minus negative 1 is going to be negative 3 over uh, 6 minus 3 is 3. So that slope is negative 1 or negative 1 over 1 if you like. So rise of negative 1 over 1. Uh, this one here. Uh, 7 minus 5 is 2 over negative 2 plus 4, right? Minus a negative 4 would be 2. So this would be 1 over 1. So are they parallel? No, because the slopes need to be the same, the exact same. Um, are they perpendicular? Yes, because they're opposite reciprocals. Now, the reciprocal part, I could have chosen a different problem to show you the, the reciprocal part more clearly, but 1 over 1 is its own reciprocal. 1 over 1 is a reciprocal of itself, so uh, yeah, these two would be perpendicular. And any other slopes that were opposite reciprocals, 3 fourths and negative 4 thirds, those lines would be perpendicular as well. Okay, um, let me save myself a little bit of time. So 17. What form is this in? Close. This is the y-intercept and this is what? The slopes. The slope intercept forms. Alright. So how do we graph this line then? Okay. Start with negative three. There's two negative threes. Which negative three do you mean? The y one, yeah, the y one down here, not the x one over there. So negative three, and then what? And then go up three. Three, over two, over two, that's the slope, right? And we connect the two dots, okay? If you, if you only retain that information about how to do it step by step, um, let's say you'll be level one, okay? You wanna be level three, a math black belt, then you'll want to understand why these things happen. So, graphing a line, we know we're gonna graph a line, we know it's a line because it's mx plus b, it's in that, fl in that form. Um, and all we need to graph a line is what? Two points. two points, we need two points. And do we want the hardest two points to find or the easiest two points to find? The easiest, right? And these turn out to be the easiest ones to find, okay? Um, so this, this point, zero, negative three, how do we know that that's on the line? Other than saying, I remembered that this is the y-intercept. Other than that, how do we mathematically show that this point zero, negative three is on the line? If x is zero, 3 over 2 times x would be 0, uh -huh. minus 3 would be negative 3, so you just go down 3. There you go. So it's an easy point to find. It turns out to be just this, all right? This by itself means this is like being ignored. We can kind of ignore this because we're plugging 0 in for x, really. Plug 0 in for x, this goes away. Anytime you have mx plus b, if you plug 0 in for x, all that will be left is this guy. This will be 0 comma whatever this is. That'll be your y-intercept. Okay. So you plug in zero there, you get negative three out. That's your y-intercept. Okay. Now the next point that we find with the slope is right there. That must be a pretty easy one to find. Okay. Uh, how about these points in between? Do any of these points look like nice points to graph? Why not? They're not on the lines. Yeah. This, this one's on, on this line, but it's not on this line, and this one's on this line, but not on this line. But if we could find one that's right at the intersection of two of those lines, right on the grid, that would be the next easiest one to find after this one right here, okay? So the question is, like, what will be the next vertical line that will intersect with a horizontal line and have a point on it? 
Well, we're, let's start at zero. We plugged in zero, that was easy. We talked about this last time. What would be the next number that you'd want to plug in for x that would be really nice and easy to multiply by three halves? Two. Two, why two? Because uh, you're just doubling it and that'll be the next intersection. Because you're doubling it? Doubling what? Doubling the uh, m. Doubling the m? Okay, what does that do? If you double this m, what's that going to do? It'll make it, um, um, uh, <laughs> not really sure. Uh, it, um, it should, it should uh, allow you to go to the, uh, the next intersection. Okay. So like you're saying you double it. Why, why double it and not triple it? in there? No. Why not? Well, you could. You could. I'm not saying could you. I'm saying would you want to. If, 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 if you're trying to find, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I agree the two, yeah, and I yes. agree doubling it. But if you put four, would four be good too? Yes. You could still, it'll still find the, uh, it'll just find the next intersection. The next one after that. So, why two and four, but not one and three? Because, uh, oh, because they're, uh, they're halfway, and so it will be at an intersection. So okay. you'll get confused. I'll get, I'll get somebody else a, a chance here. I think you're definitely on to something, Kelly. If you use two or four, there are like um, factors of two. Uh huh. And so multiples of two. Multiples of two, yeah. So then you can take out the twos. Right, so like we have x, we can think of it as, as x as over one. Yeah. And so whatever goes here, we have two fractions multiplied by each other. And if we could cross cancel and get rid of this two and just have ones down here, that'd be great. So if we use two, that'll happen. If we use four, that'll happen. Six, eight, any multiple of two. Even negative two, negative four, right? Those are gonna cancel with that two in the denominator, right? Is that what's, what's telling you that two and four are good? Because you have yeah. a two down here, right? Sometimes it's hard to say what you're thinking. Um, so the next point that would be easy to find would be over at two, right? And all that would do is take negative three and add another three, right? That'd be your vertical add up. So you move over two and up three. And if we moved over another two to four, well then we'd be just adding another three on, right? We get four, two, we cancel with four, this would be two. Three times two would be six. And we move another three. And the next one, if we put uh, six here, six cancels with two, we're left with three. Three times three is nine. Well, that's just adding another three on to six. So we just keep adding on another three every time we move over two. That's just the slope. That's how that works. It's just the next convenient x value to plug in given this fraction right here. So each next uh, convenient step is two over, and then you'll uh, consequently add three more every time. There we go. Easiest two to find, plug in zero for x, and then find the next uh, number over the smallest number that'll cancel out this denominator here, and you'll move up just that much more from your starting point to the y-intercept. Okay, two easy things to find. Well, that's the idea. We're gonna find the two easiest points on the graph, given the equation in, in whatever form we have. So now this is in a different form. Do you remember what this form is called? standard form. I don't know why it's called standard. There's really nothing standard about it. I would say we use this more standardly than, than this. So I don't know. It's a funny name. Um, so what we're trying to do is find two easiest, the easiest points to, to figure out. Right? So the same kind of idea as what we started with here. What could we do with this equation that would make a point really easy to find? <coughs> could do that, okay, so you're working towards putting it in this form, in the slope-intercept form. That would be pretty easy. Slope-intercept form is pretty convenient. I would say, though, if we were going to race, and I were going to use the way I was trying to lead us towards in your way, uh, or even if you raced yourself, right, and you did it both ways, I would say if you did it this other way, you'd get done a little bit faster, right? It's a little, there's a little bit of an easier way, but that definitely works. It's clever. It's good. Dave? Put zero into one of the variables. Right. Why is that a, a, a good, a clever, easy idea to put zero, say, in for x? Because then you can figure out the other variable. 
right, this variable, this thing goes away completely, 2 times 0. Easiest number to multiply it by is 0. And here we get negative 6y equals negative 12. And we just solve that thing. So we put in 0 for x. Let me, um, I'm going to get a different color. So we put 0 in for x right there. Then we'll solve for y. And what will we get? We get positive 2 divided by negative 6 on both sides. Okay, similarly, we can put 0 in for y. There's no reason why we can't plug things in for y and then figure out what x would be. So negative 6 times 0 is 0. So now we just have the equation 2x equals negative 12. And we get negative 6. And we have those two points. Negative 6, 0. 0, 2. If you put it in slope-intercept form, probably you got the y-intercept of 2. And then you've got a slope of uh, 1, one third. You go up one and over three, you probably wind up with a point over there. And it's all the same. It comes out to be the same line. Uh, so either way you go, that'll do it. All right. Um, so for this one, we're going to graph a line in, in two dimensions so that y is always equal to negative 2. So we look at y. There's y is definitely equal to negative 2 right there. And where else is y equal to negative 2? The x axis. All along parallel to the x axis. All along here, y is equal to negative 2. y is equal to negative 2 over here, and here, and here, and here. So we have to draw this horizontal line so that we stay at that that vertical level of negative 2. We don't want to break from that. All right, any questions at all from the quiz that I seem to have skipped over? Any questions from the homework? Don't hesitate to ask a question from the homework if you're confused about it. Question: I passed in, uh, uh, I passed out some review material last period, and uh, they they kept asking a a similar question. So I just want to talk with you about it uh, before I do that, and maybe clear some stuff up. So here's a line, and here's another line. Okay. What words would you use to describe this line versus that line? It's orange. I like it steeper. It's orange, that's true. But it is steeper. Okay. Uh, well, what would the slope, how would the slopes compare between this line and that line, between a steeper line and a not as steep line? Okay, uh, yeah, Gavin. A steeper line would have a greater slope. There you go, that's pretty simple, right? It's, it's got to have a greater slope. In case 
that's you don't immediately jump on board with that and think, yeah, that's got to be. Let me show you here. The slope. What is the slope? It's a it's a number that measures what? Rise over run. Right. It's this ratio of how from this point to some other point. How far up do I have to go versus how far over do I have to go? So, and we can make the slope really look however we want. Like for example, three fourths. Three fourths is the slope. It's a ratio of three to four. We could also do six to eight. We could do uh, one and a half, one point five versus two. Right? We could cut the both in half. We could do uh, twelve versus sixteen. All these ratios are the same. Right? So however it looks like if the denominator changes, as long as we change the numerator equally, then we should be fine. So if you look here, let's look at the slopes of these, but let's do something uh, kind of, I think, helpful to, to look at. We'll just say they're both going to go to the right one. Right? So just to show us that the slope of this has to be greater, they're both just going to move over one, but this one has to go up a lot more than this one. So, right, if these are both, this is one, and this is also one. Well, A obviously is going to be bigger than B. So, <coughs> A over one is going to be bigger than B over one. So, the slope of this orange line is going to be greater. Even if they look a little bit different, this, if, if we look at them both on a distance of one, a horizontal distance of one, the rise would have to be greater for the steeper one. So, uh, the slope of a steeper line is bigger, or greater, or whatever we want to say. Okay, okay. so which is bigger? Um, let's see, a slope with uh, seven. Or um, five halves. Okay. So let's say we had one line that was y equals seven thirds x plus two, and another one that was y equals five halves x minus six. Okay. Which line is steeper? Mistake here, we're going to run into the same problem here as we did with the parallel and perpendicular lines. If you just try to draw it and see which one looks steeper, put a line on our eyeballs, which are not perfect. But the numbers are perfect. So, how do we decide which one is steeper? Are we going to decide by looking at 2 and negative 6? No. That doesn't matter. What does matter? The slopes, the m's, right? And the steeper line will have what kind of slope? The greater slope. So how do we decide which of these numbers is greater? How do you know? Without getting it into decimal. You know all that silly. Don't give up on fractions. What, what, did, what somebody else said what? A common denominator. If we get the denominators to be the same denominator, then we can clearly see if this is... 5 and this is 12, then 12 is bigger than 5. And if the denominators are the same, then they're just, we're comparing like things. Okay. So what will be the denominator? 6. 6. Okay. So we can also make this what over 6? 14 over 6x plus 2. Okay. And this one? 15 over 6. 15 over 6x minus 6. So just by a little bit, this one is a bigger slope, therefore it's a steeper one. We're just looking for a bigger slope. We've got to get common denominators. Um, if, if, if you turn it into decimals, I can't argue with it. You get, you've got proof that one is bigger than the other. But trying to keep fractions alive. That's what I want. Okay, fractions to stay alive. Um, so that was a common question. Uh, if you have any other questions, um, let me just explain what we do. So I'm going to give you a packet that just looks like a bunch of test questions. That's what it is. It's questions that um, the, the types 
of which you'll probably see on the test are with different members of the staff, mostly. Um, so there's, there's quite a few, and I'll choose the ones that I like the most that I feel like are testing you on the stuff that I want to make sure you know the best. Um, so while we're here, the, the advantage of being here is that I'm here and you can ask me questions, whereas if you go home, I'm not there, and if you get confused, you're at the mercy of what resources you have available there. Okay, so if you're here, you should take advantage of that. So look through there, and whichever ones you're really confident on, you can calculate slopes all day long, given two points, and don't worry about doing those. You can maybe practice those later if you want. But things you have questions on, uh, ask me questions. And if there are a lot of people have the same question, we'll work it up on the board. And, uh, it's just a time for you to use as wisely as you can decide to use it. Um, but we're not going to be Snapchatting or uh, jiving or whatever that is. Somebody asked about jive. Jive. I don't know what that is. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna be doing math stuff uh, in here. So move around the room if you want. Work in groups. Uh, you can form a group with me if you want. Whatever makes the most sense to you. Um, I'll pass those out in just a second. 